Hello friends, welcome to another episode by Engineering Today. We hope it's going well for you. We have some intriguing news to share with you today. Starship will come first. On Twitter, SpaceX posted new images demonstrating that it has almost completed installing the 39 upgraded Raptor engines needed to launch its fully reusable Starship rocket into orbit for the first mission. Both a super heavy booster called Booster 7 and a new Starship prototype called Ship 24 are receiving the engines. They'll launch simultaneously into orbit this summer, pending the outcome of upcoming testing. On June 23rd, SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster 7 traveled to the launch pad for the third time to conduct testing with its 33 brand new Raptor 2 engines. SpaceX may send Booster 7 through a wet dress rehearsal similar to the one recently conducted by NASA on its moon-bound space launch system after it has successfully completed four cryogenic proofs and a Raptor thrust simulation test. On July 2nd, SpaceX posted pictures of the nearly done construction of Booster 7 and Starship S24 with its six Raptor engines. It's likely that the ship's aft has a framework installed to allow for additional thermal protection for ground tests and maybe the forthcoming orbital launch. Cryogenic verification and thrust simulation tests for the totally reusable launch vehicle prototype have also been finished. In order to have a 12-hour test window on any of these days, sources claim that SpaceX has asked for road closures on July 5th through 7th and July 11th through 12th. After receiving certification from the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, Following the publication of a long-awaited environmental review, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk stated last month that the company's enormous Mars-bound rocket should be ready to fly in July. For the first time ever, a rocket is now available that can set up permanent bases on the Moon and Mars, said Elon Musk in a post following the FAA approval announcement. Due to its fully reusable design, the finished Starship rocket is anticipated to revolutionize spaceflight by lowering the cost of subsequent launches. Musk stated in March that Raptor 2 engines, which are far more capable and dependable, will be used for the first Starship orbital mission. 500,000 pound thrust at sea level or 230 tons. By the end of next month, we'll have constructed 39 flight-worthy engines and with another month of integration, we should be able to conduct an orbital flight test by May. Raptor V2 is manufactured at a cost that Musk has claimed is around half that of Raptor V1.5. It's also far more trustworthy and potent, according to him. To reach 230 tons of thrust at sea level, SpaceX was able to increase Raptor's maximum thrust by 25% we may be very close to witnessing Starship enter orbit for the first time, even though that May launch didn't happen because SpaceX has finally received FAA approval. If Musk is to be believed, which is debatably a large if, it will be the maiden launch of a rocket that may ultimately transport up to a million people to Mars. Let's move on to the second update for today. Following a sequence of burns by a rocket lab transfer stage, a NASA-funded lunar CubeSat was set to reach the moon on July 4th. At 3.18 a.m. Eastern, just after the Photon's Hyper Curie engine's seventh and final burn that put the vehicles on a ballistic lunar trajectory, Rocket Lab's Lunar Photon stage released the CIS Lunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment Capstone CubeSat. Lunar Photon and Capstone were sent into low Earth orbit on June 28 by Rocket Lab's Electron. Before the last translunar injection burn, Lunar Photon made maneuvers to raise its orbit's apogee, bringing it to 70,000 kilometers. 
The management of Terran orbitals 12U CubeSat capstone will be transferred to advanced space in order to assess the stability of that orbit before upcoming Artemis missions such as the Lunar Gateway, which will function there. The NASA-funded mission will enter a nearly rectilinear halo orbit around the Moon. By connecting to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, it will test autonomous positioning capabilities as well. In total, NASA has agreements with Advanced Space and Rocket Lab for around $30 million for Capstone. The chief executive of Advanced Space, Brad Cheatham, stated in a statement, Getting to this point, we have already learned a huge lot, and the time has come to execute our unique expertise for this momentous moon mission for NASA. Flying a low-energy trajectory that will take it 1.2 million kilometers from Earth, Capstone will take more than four months to reach the Moon. In a maneuver planned on November 13th, that trajectory will reduce the amount of propellant required to enter lunar orbit. The first mission outside of Earth orbit for Rocket Lab was Capstone, a privately funded Venus probe mission being developed by the business which plans to launch it on an electron as early as next year, will resemble Capstone and Lunar Photon in terms of architecture. According to the corporation, the same architecture might be utilized for additional solar system missions. In statements made during the company's live stream of the Capstone deployment, Rocket Lab's CEO Peter Beck remarked, We've established really fantastic, low-cost access to not only the Moon, but to asteroids and other planets in our solar system. This is the start of a new era in science where you can travel to Mars, Venus, an asteroid, the Moon, or other celestial bodies for tens of millions of dollars. This year's capstone launch marked Rocket Lab's fourth electron mission. The business stated that the following electron might launch as early as next week, although it's not yet provided information regarding the mission's launch window or customer. Let's move on to our last update as SpaceX plans multiple Starlink launches this month. For the first of as many as five Starlink launches scheduled for July, a SpaceX drone ship has left port. As SpaceX prepared for its first launch of the second half of 2022, the drone ship, just read the instructions, was pulled away from Port Canaveral, Florida on July 2nd. The semi-autonomous modified barge is slated to assist SpaceX's 49th dedicated Starlink launch, which will launch about 664 kilometers or 413 miles northeast into the Atlantic Ocean. Attempting to retrieve a Falcon booster on board the drone ship JRTI for the 37th time, the operation would mark the ship's 34th straight successful booster landing since January 2017. Falcon 9 B-1058, which will launch with Starlink 421 later this week, will join it, hopefully in one piece, as it attempts to become the second rocket to try a 13th orbital class launch and landing. On June 17th, the Falcon 9 B-1060 liquid rocket booster became the first to complete 13 launches. Starlink 421, the first of potentially five Starlink flights scheduled for July, was initially scheduled to launch from Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A pad as early as June 26, after SpaceX and NASA opted to considerably postpone a Dragon launch scheduled to utilize the same pad. Later, SpaceX made the decision to push back Starlink 421 to July 7 and move it to LC-40, most likely in order to make room on Pad 39 for the delayed Dragon's newest mid-July launch objective. Since December 2021, SpaceX has kept LC-40 continuously occupied with little more than three weeks of downtime in between flights. Additionally, it permitted simultaneous launches on June 19th and 29th, which helped to account for Starlink 421's approximately 10-day delay. In July, LC-40 won't find any solace either. Following Starlink 421, according to Next Spaceflight, SpaceX plans to launch Starlink 422 and 425 from LC-40 or Pad 39A shortly after Cargo Dragon's postponed CRS-25 space station resupply mission goes off around July 14th. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting.
and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.